welcome to another episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? I hope that you have been enjoying it. And, you know, we've been changing things up. You saw some art. Uh, we had a couple of writer artists and artist readers. And you've also seen a, a monologue acted. And we're going to have a treat for you today. I'm Karen E. Osborne, author of Getting It Right and Tangled Lies, which comes out on July 22nd. And today, my guest is Linda Sheehan. And she is. Uh, first of all, she's so funny. Uh, so she is the author of a very funny book called Foreplay. And then her latest effort, which just came out, is Decanted. And I had the pleasure of reading it. And you're just going to, you're going to love it. You're going to love, love, love it. Welcome, welcome, Linda. Thank you, Karen. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. And by the way, I love Tangled Lies. It just kept me riveted and I love the characters. So congratulations on that. Oh, thank you so much. So, you know, we're just a mutual admiration society yeah. here, but that is a good thing because we're straightforward, honest people. <laughs> like so, Linda, before you tell us all about um, Decanted and foreplay and uh, and your writing journey. And Linda is going to read an excerpt from her book, Decanted. Uh, but before we do all of that, do you have a recommendation for our audience of something oh, okay. they should read? Well, my sister just sent me two fun books by Nora Ephraim, which oh. I don't know how old they are, but I remember nothing. Yeah. And kind of sad because apparently she knew she was dying mm. when she wrote, she wrote it, it and no one else knew. Mm. And then at the end of the book, she just says what she's going to miss and what she won't miss. Yeah. Like mm. dry skin, bad dinners, the, like the one last night, technology in general, my closet, washing my hair, bras, funerals, illness everywhere. But the book itself is a delight. Okay. And I feel bad about my neck is really funny. Yeah. Uh, everyone can relate to that. I, can, I just got to say, I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, me too, big time. <laughs> I, I like, how yeah. did you get started writing? I was reading this description of Decanted, and uh, I just want to read it for our audience. And they said, Linda Sheehan, who is part of a Napa wine dynasty and has written Decanted, a wonderful story of grapes, wine, first crushes, and juicy redemption. Doesn't that sound awesome? So how, what was your writing journey like? Because clearly you were doing something else before. Okay, so, so I started my career after college at CBS Entertainment, uh, working um, editing and producing trail commercials for our, the movies that we aired on the network and worked with a lot of writers and, um, and uh, film directors on how to edit their movie. And that was fantastic. And I got a little, just tired of living in New York and went out to LA and started doing um, movie trailers for, for my own company and created movie trailers for the studio. So there was a lot, lot of writing involved, mm -hmm. writing the trailers, writing the copy, writing um, ads. And uh, I did that and um, just uh, when my kids graduated college, I, I stopped all that and moved up to Napa. And um, my daughter who moved up there my son and my daughter were both there and started making their own wine. And my daughter had spent a lot of time in France, knocking on doors, talking to uh, the big, big wine producers on their methods and tasting their wines and learning all about vineyard management and making wine. And it was the characters that she met, it, the whole journey for her when she started producing her wine was so interesting to me and people, kept asking me all about Samantha and how did she get into this? And then her wine started getting great reviews and people would read articles. And I thought, wow, her story really is amazing. And people are so interested in this. I'm just gonna see if I can write a, a book kind of based on her life. 
And that's what I did. And I had a lot of fun writing it. And when I had questions about winemaking, uh, she'd be over every day for meetings. And it was, it was just a lot of fun. And I learned a lot about wine, things that I didn't know in the process. And so when she read it, what did she think? Um, she actually never read it, but <laughs> <laughs> she's so busy. She didn't have time to read it. <laughs> so what do you think she's going to think? Well, she's read a lot of parts of it. Oh, yeah. Because this is a mother daughter yeah. story and I just, yeah. Um, just yeah, mother and daughter, yeah. kind of a collaboration. Cool. So, yeah. It was nice and your to son have. is also in the wine business, right? Yeah. He, uh, he has a big wine business. He ships wine all over the world of wine that he makes. And he just has a fantastic palate and knows how to make wine at a lower price that people love. His wine called Precision is the biggest selling wine at Costco for all of Costco. And I happen to name it Precision for him. I'm, I'm kind of like the help him creatively with his, his yeah, yeah. Names and, and uh, marketing. And uh, he didn't like the name and I had to argue and argue and then say, stop <laughs> arguing with me, mom. And then finally he agreed to, could, because he was getting good results on it. And so now that's his company name and his wine name. So I always laugh, but he has a lot of other wines also. Yeah. Show, show the audience your, the cover. I love the cover of okay. this book. Show them your beautiful cover. Isn't that cool? Doesn't that make you want to just pick the book up and read it? <laughs> oh, actually, um, the concept for the cover, um, my son-in-law, Samantha's husband, my daughter, the winemaker, her husband is a label artist. Oh, if I had the bottles, I could show you. He's done such cool labels um, and is like a big part of her marketing team. And he does labels for companies all over all over wine country. And um, he just thought it would be cool to have it kind of look like a, a, a um, Italian movie poster from the 60s. <laughs> it is kind it of is crazy very, design. Very, very cool. So what? Uh, tell us just a little bit about what the book is about. Give us a little sense okay. of what the book is about, and then you can read a, an excerpt. Sure. Uh, it's about a girl who's um, a few years out of college. She's working in the accounting business in New York City and working her tail off. And um, she happens to love wine and is has been in spot, taught about wine by her aunt Vivian, who was a um, artist model in Paris when she was a young girl and she, um, Samantha had been she had helped raise Samantha and taught her all about winemaking and wine tasting and Samantha would go to her friend who has a wine store and taste wines at night to relax with him and then she gets the opportunity to go work um, Paris, work in France at a uh, wine domain one night night when she's in the store by the owners of the domain who are visiting and um, she doesn't want to go but then some things happen at work and she just decides to take the plunge and quit her job and go take whatever money she has and go to France to work har grape harvest and when she gets there um, there's this she's been warned by the brother of the winemaker in France to stay away um, from Julian because he he likes to take advantage. He's really known as a skirt chaser and just beware of of uh, Julian and um, stay away because you know he's he has a lot of groupy girlfriends. And of course she doesn't. Of course, and he's yeah. Well, we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> so, um, that's so actually, I was. Hmm? I'm sorry. What were you saying? Oh, that a piece is referring to um, Samantha being wary of going to France because she's heard that the winemaker where she's going to be making har uh, where she's going to be working harvest is is uh, a little too frisky. A little too frisky. All right. So please let's okay. let's hear about it. Let's hear it. Okay. Her friends. She's about to meet her friends. 
Cameron and Stephanie had beat me to Spence's shop to buy a bottle for our picnic in the park, and we were sitting at the bar typing emails. So you're getting out of Dodge, are you? Asked Cam when I walked in. I am, and I'm sure you're both welcome to join me, if not, if not at Domaine Lamont. Plenty of other wineries in France are happy to accept harvest help from what I've seen online. I'd go in a heartbeat if I had your courage, Stephanie said, and if I wasn't saddled with 30 plus years of student loans, she put her elbow on the bar, rested her chin on her palms and let out a deep breath. I'll be past menopause by the time I've paid them off. It's a big colossal risk for me too, I said, and my, as my furious mother just reminded me, and with all those accounting majors trotting around with degrees from the Ivies, I may not be able to get back in a weather house or any other big firm if I go bust. They'll take you back. They love you there, Cameron assured me. But here's something weird. Henry Lamont, who sells the family's wine, warned me about his brother, Julian, the winemaker, said he didn't recommend me going into the cellar with him, called him a courier de jupon, a skirt chaser. Oh my, that's not good, Cameron said. If you think sexual harassment is a problem here, just could be bogus info though, I said. Sounds like those two guys have some major sibling rival rivalry going on. And Julian's a serious winemaker, not a playboy. Yeah, but we're talking about France, Cameron said as he checked his phone. Let's see, Julian Lamont images. Here we go, Julian Lamont, Paris match. Oh boy, he looks like a young Hugh Hefner. He held up his screen up for Stephanie, Stephanie and me to see a photo of a 20 second, 20, something guy with dark curly hair, an impish smile, and three very young hot blondes draped over him at what looked to be a restaurant. Looks like he's got some other interests going on there besides making wine, Stephanie said, and he sure is cute. Well, I'll just make it clear from the get-go, I'm there to learn, not party. I looked over at a bag of wine on the counter. So what'd you two pick out for us? Some bubbles to help me celebrate? It is a wonderful, wonderful read, and you will enjoy it very, very much. So where could our audience uh, be in touch with you? How can they find you? Okay, so they can find me on Instagram at Linda Sheehan Author. My website is lindasheehanauthor.com and um, Linda Fayola Sheehan on Facebook. But most people just find me on Instagram and send me a message. Excellent. And could you spell Sheehan for everybody? Just so oh, they can. Yes. Uh, Linda, L I N D A S H E E H A N is Sheehan. Wonderful. Wonderful. I wanted, that was fun. I was, um, I recently, I finished the book maybe, I don't know, three or four weeks ago. And it was, it was fun listening to you read it because it, uh, it comes alive, you know? Uh, so that's, that's so good. And I hope that you enjoyed this episode and that you will come back and see us again. Come on back, everyone. Thanks for having me, Karen. Take care. Thanks for joining Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.